they would change it to the slave of God. Um, you know, instead of, uh, uh, you know, no, it's good but, to hear. And, and, and many of the Sahaba didn't have Arabic names as well, like yeah. Salman. Yeah. Salman is, is a Persian name. Uh, it didn't change it to Sol Suleiman. From a region name originally, which I imagine is yeah, Salman from Suleiman, from Suleiman yeah, yeah, yeah. which is from Shlomo. Yeah. And he, here's the interesting in Hebrew, it's Shlomo. I don't know how we got the Solomon from Shlomo, but well. in Hebrew, it's Shlomo. Um, yeah. But anyway, um, we're uh, going to go to politics. No, no, I mean, no, I mean, we were just speaking about uh, a lot of things. <laughs> Uh, and all of a sudden, these four cameras when yeah. the politics comes up. It <laughs> could have it's come about good. 20 and minutes. You know what? Ago. It's going to get really angry. People will come around and shout at us. So hopefully, we can keep it civil. Oh, okay. um, yeah, I mean, I don't want it to go that way. I, 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 I don't either. I was like really interested in actually knowing more about the revelation. That that yeah. really is something I'm actually interested and in. I, I, truthfully, I gave it everything I've given you yeah. is probably as much as I can. I, do. Can I give you maybe the Islamic perspective? Not you. Maybe you're not interested, or you don't. I know you're not interested, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, very briefly. I am more interested in why, where we're going to go with politics, though, just because that, that is why... Yeah, I'm I mean, it's, it's not my fault. Yeah. You know. But you did have a political... Uh, you just don't no, want to do Okay, okay, one thing I would ask yeah. is... It, what, what are your opinions on, like, um, Israel, Palestine? And don't assume so that my opinions yeah. are what you think, by the way. Don't yeah. assume. So I won't, no, I won't. Because so far, you might be like, shocked. No, so far, uh, yeah. everything you've said has been quite... Like, not what I'd expect. So yeah. when it came to Israel, Palestine, I wouldn't expect it to be yeah. the same either. You told me you had a slave. <laughs> you <can't> no. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't expecting that, John. Um, so, could you do me a favour? Does that say record on this one here? It says record in the bottom. Let me just check. So you asked my view on Israel, Palestine. Yeah. I believe, if I'm speaking to you, I would maybe speak religious language, but if I'm speaking to anyone else, I would use secular language. Yeah. I believe the Jews are indigenous to that land. It's the only place we've been a nation and we never left it. We tried living under other nations and it didn't work. Christians massacred us, atheists massacred us, Muslims unfortunately massacred us in some, some points in history. And the only people I trust... Jews massacred <laughs> I'm not sure. <laughs> Actually, yeah, the fact that history Jews must have done the Jews, yeah, I think. Yeah. So, but no, so uh, that's a fair comment. Yeah. Um, and it's not for me. It's not for me. It's not you guys got it up, everyone. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah that's a, it's a true statement. But what I was going to say is the only people that I trust truly have my interest at heart are my family. So we could have a good caliph. Um, the, the, Khalifa could be a very good Muslim ruler who treats the Jews incredibly well and Jews rise to very prominent positions within that caliphate, within that Khilafah. But then you can have the next um, caliph is an absolute tyrant who massacres Jews. Now for me, I feel the only people who are likely to constantly have my best interest at heart are my people. I want Jews to be responsible for protecting Jews because when Gentiles have protected us, sometimes they've done a good job, other times they've butchered us and massacred us and left us in the street. Corpse stacked on top of corpse. And so from my perspective, the only way we can ensure that Jews will survive for the next generation is if we have a state. So my argument, and where can we have a state? We can't have a state in Uganda or Argentina. The only place in that was actually uh, I know that's why you, I, both I lived in Uganda before, by the way. Amazing. I lived there for two years. Um, is that why you got your slaves? No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the, the only place I believe we have any claim to yeah. is, is Israel. Now, personally, I don't believe that should come at the expense of any Arab who's living on the land or any other person who's been living okay. there. The land is big enough to share, either in one state, multiple states. Well, it doesn't really matter. There's enough land there for both parties to coexist. But I do believe it's absolutely essential and morally just for the Jews to have a state in that specific region. That location. Yeah. So do you think they should, is the boundaries to that state? What, what should the boundaries be? So I think they're up for negotiation. So as an example, now is people there, Is there specific boundaries you would uh, prefer? Okay, I'll give an honest answer. Honest answer. What I would prefer is not what I would advocate for. No problem. But one. So I would say my preference would be Judea and Samaria. So the West Bank and Israel. I'm not bothered about Gaza. I'm actually not bothered about Ilat either, but we will keep it. But 
the holiest sites in the Jewish world are first and foremost Jerusalem, and then after Jerusalem, certain sites within the West Bank. Most of those sites are in areas that many in the international community would say is Palestinian territory. I would dispute that. But you asked me what my preference was. My preference isn't necessarily what's the best solution for peace and for all the people in the land. And so while that land is the holiest land you could imagine for us, I think that life, blood, is more important than soil. And so I would be willing to give up land and rocks for human life. So Hebron is a great example. My, my forefathers are buried in Hebron. It's a very, very holy city. It's an ancient city. In 15th century, Jews have lived there since time in, like it's the first land that any Jew ever bought. Like Abraham you believe bought. Abraham's buried there? Yeah, well, Jews believe that, yeah. Um, and we have done for the same. And like, so in 1517, when the Ottomans conquered Hebron, they massacred Jews there. So we know that Jews have lived there. In 1929, the Jews were massacred again. Oh, it's ridiculous. Um, Jews have been massacred. So Jews have lived there since time immemorial. Everybody arguing out there, come and set it on a bar, man. Come set it on a bar. Let's see who can push the most reps. Come on. Oh, that's not good. This is ridiculous. Um, we may move the cameras away. Yeah. Um, and so. Stop arguing, stop fighting. Come set it a simple way. It's easy. Come on. Easy. Okay. So. To, so it's not oh yeah, to, completely but yeah um, I heard something I don't know the evidence is I heard something about from the Nile to the Euphrates is that yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's a conspiracy theory. there's some there's some um, Jewish groups believe that or, so you may get like the odd fringe person there yeah. It's not, a, it's not a mainstream position. Most, and Sinai, not Sinai. Um, no, I mean, Jews gave up Sinai. Jews, Jews yeah. conquered Sinai from Egypt and then gave it back for peace. We've, we've got no intentions on Sinai. Should we move our camera? I, I'm going to finish you, I'll just, yeah. just get an understanding, really. And, um... Oh, so Sam Dow was uh, sort of the mold. How does um, it work with, um... with, um... Muslims living within the Jewish... State. You put, put it on him. We're finishing now. Oh, is he? Yeah. We, we, How does it with Muslim? So here's the thing which most I, people don't. The realize. ideal for you, yeah. I mean. So the Not, ideal for me, mean. any Muslim has complete equality with a Jew. A Muslim can be prime minister. A Muslim can be a top judge. And in Israel, there's two million Arabs who have complete equality with Jews. Well, he's louder than those guys. There's um, two million Arabs who have complete equality with Jews. Complete equality. In fact, an Arab judge sent a Jewish prime minister and a Jewish president to jail. There were hundreds of mosques throughout Israel. That's what I've I been want. Now, been the flip side is. Hassan didn't true. let me in, but the, the, that's the, 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 the flip side is not true, however. The, there's not one Jew under the Palestinian Authority. There's no synagogues that destroyed them all. Jews aren't allowed to hold office. Jews aren't even allowed to be citizens. And so for me, when I look at the two, I say, okay, Israel is more moral in how it treats the minority. It depends what you mean, moral, right? I mean, that's I mean, from I mean, a secular I mean, West. Western secular perspective. I, I mean, in, in, from a in, religious perspective. So you would say in a religious perspective. I would say it is in, a, in an ideal I would Jewish. say it's haram what the Muslims in Palestine do and the Palestinian territories do. It's haram because you know, they ban Jews from being citizens. Mohammed didn't ban Jews oh, that, from being that's citizens. That's something else, yeah. Um, yeah Omar yeah. didn't ban Jews. Omar invited the Jews back to Jerusalem. Yeah, I'm talking about from a Jewish perspective. From a Jewish perspective, would you have Gentiles in public office I mean not Israel I mean yeah. in the past in yeah. some of the Jewish kingdoms would, would you have Gentiles and pagans in public office I mean you, I don't there, think there's a concept right? of a Gertoshav which is a resident alien um, so it's a a citizen of the state that isn't Jewish they have to subscribe to certain laws they have their own religious cause it's actually quite similar to how Islam operates what would happen in a, that but this was like yeah, the last time we had this was 2,000 years ago. I get it. But and today, if we if we had a theocracy, it would be very different. So it's hard to say. Basically, the sages of our generation would determine what rank a non-Jew. For instance, you wouldn't have a non-Jewish king because the king has to be from yeah. a certain line. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but like, that we're getting into so like ancient, ancient concepts which wouldn't be applicable today. We wouldn't have a king. We'd, we'd have a religious court. You, you might have a king one day. I mean, if it, if it happened, yeah. Um, how maybe, would it work? Maybe, you know. I mean, I mean, I don't think Israel itself is is the ideal for a Jewish state, is it? So I think it's the best 
that's available for us at the moment. And what I mean by that is, in the old days, like the ancient kingdom, the, if you sat on the Sanhedrin, which is the court that determines what that, that made it a theocracy, which made it a religious state, um, the judges had to be steeped in secular wisdom and steeped in Jewish law. They were the greatest minds, like secular and religious minds. And they are the people that define the Judaism I practice today. They define the values, or they help shape the values that modernity is based upon. Um, and so these great, great scholars who spoke multiple languages, knew mathematics, science, philosophy, Torah, halacha, all, everything. That, we don't have that today. Our rabbis today are incredibly knowledgeable on Jewish law, but ignorant where you. it comes to secular law. So I don't think we are ready for a religious state. There would be division. But what would be the ideal? Like what, the, like the, the, these rabbis, the ideal would what be, would they, what so are they? How, how it was set up before, I believe is the ideal, but we're just not ready for that. The, you have, the, basically, like with the, you have a son, the key thing is the Sanhedrin, the Bed Din Hagadol, which is the, the Supreme Court. And they would set laws for the people. It was like made yeah. of 70 plus, 71 yeah, yeah. plus men. And they would determine what laws the people The follow. last time that was at Ezra or? At so, yeah, yeah, it's actually, we, we kind of consider it to be uh, Rab Ashin Ravina, who were the final rabbis who like, brought together the Talmud and helped codify the Talmud. Because basically how it works is, does a court have the authority to rule for all Jews in the land? And when we went into exile, it became very hard to have one court judging for all Jews. Yeah. And so, what I believe is that this court system was the right system. You had the finest like religious and secular minds in one court, and they would pass a law. And if the people accepted the law, they followed the law, it became binding. If the people were unable to, the, the court then had to repeal the law. As long as it didn't contravene, it contravened Torah law. So as an example, Jews are not allowed to drink wine that could have been um, used for idolatry. And so they decreed that we can't even handle Jews wine that's been handled by a, a, a non-Jewish person yeah. in case that non-Jew used it for idolatry. They made this, and that's binding today. I can only drink wine or grape juice that's been um, handled by Jews in case it's been used for idolatry. They made the same decree for olive oil, but the people weren't able to keep the olive oil. They kept them buying Greek olive oil, so the, the court repealed, repealed that law. And so what you have is this court system, which is like a balance of having like a meritocracy, the greatest minds, but are only able to pass laws that the people democratically accept. So for me, that's a good system, and that is our system. It would obviously be updated because man has updated since. So it is. It is how you do it. Yeah, I get it. So the the democracy of Israel, if you like, kind of does fit in with that. Yeah, it, I think Israel's not religious though, and it's not ready to be religious. Mm. Israel's very divided between secular and religious people, and you wouldn't be able to have a panel of rabbis that the secular Jews would accept. And you wouldn't have a secular leaders that the religious Jews would accept. So what's your plan for the territories which would be the ideal? Is it a gradual so my, my takeover? Plan, no, no, my, my plan is to advocate for peace, but advocate for a strong Israel. So peace without compromising Jewish security. Um, there is certain places over the Green Line. I absolutely think Israel has a league. I was there, I was there literally last week at a place called Givat Etam, which is just outside of Rath, which is just south of Bethlehem. Yeah. Israel purchased that land in 1943 from a monastery at the bottom of the valley. Israel has every right to that land, by my right, like legally and everything. That, that land was purchased by Jews, it's Jewish land, it should not be part of the Palestinian state. I would potentially compromise I would potentially compromise that in the name of peace. My, my friend lives there, he has a farm there, and I would be supportive of giving up that farm if it brought lasting peace. But it would have to be lasting and sincere peace. I'm not willing to compromise land for fake peace and for false peace. But I'm agnostic. Any solution that brings lasting peace between Israelis and Palestinians. Interesting. How about you? <laughs> you know, I'm not a I'm not a political commentator, but uh, yeah, you know. Or have you got views that you'd rather not say in camera? No, I think it's um, 
in an Islamic system, Jews would be, obviously, as you know, uh, should be allowed to live within an Islamic system anyway. So, so my thing is, I don't want to live under Muslims, though. I don't know, it's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. But I know, agree with you. Yeah, that, that, it should be, yeah. you know. Like you say, it's not always been the case, but, you know, Islamic Islam allows that. Um, it's good. It's what it's a no. You know, yeah. kind of what you. I do. It's not often you get a chance to speak yeah. to. No, likewise, I would also. I thank you for. I think you're a good ambassador of Islam. You dealt with me with respect. You've listened. You haven't shouted over. I think it's been a very good conversation. Yeah, I, I, wanted to, I wanted to know what you know. Ideally, as I said, I wanted to speak more about the beliefs and the and the revelation perspective. Yeah. The politics, you know, I'm not too, I'm not too involved or interested. Politics is the dunya. You're, you're interested yeah. in. Yeah, I'm interested in the the, the, the Jewish concepts of revelation more, and where it came from, and how you justify it, and yeah. know how you know, you know, yeah. prophecy ended, for instance. That's quite important. Um, but um, yeah, I wasn't allowed in Israel last time I went. They stopped me at the airport and. Send me back. So the the weird thing is they they asked. I wrote a book about atheism. Yeah. So they said you you wrote a book about atheism. I said yeah. They said you're going to write a book about Judaism. I said probably not because Muslims are not becoming Jewish. Yeah. It's not a theological yeah. challenge for us in that perspective. Yeah. They didn't like it so. That's quite interesting. Usually when people don't get let into the country, it's because they've been involved in hostile activity in the country. But meeting you, you don't no, strike me I'll as tell you now, that would be... I, I've never been to any protests. Yeah. I don't agree with protests, full stop, <laughs> on the streets. Uh, you know, I don't agree with uh, public protests. It's not something I subscribe to. If you subscribe do visit to. again, I'll give you my card. And I'm not saying I can get you into the country, but I, I know to, people, I connect yeah. with the Israeli government regularly. Um, yeah. I know people that work in that area, and there's maybe something I can do to help. Yeah. If I spoke ever. to uh, Toby Singer as well, Rabbi. Yeah. I don't know if you know. I, him. I know him well. I know him well. Yeah, I spoke to him. I speak to him sometimes as well, and he said the same thing. Yeah. He said, "Look, when you get there, you know, I, I would like to go." And um, but yeah. I, I said, I'm just interested in picking your brain and yeah. I don't really, I've not seen your videos, I don't know. Uh, so of most of my videos are the but worst, because I, like, I come to this park, it's filled with anti semites many of them are Muslim, and so my videos are conflict. I would much rather have a conversation like this, where it's respectful, we learn from each other, I'm not threatened by you, you're not threatened by me, it's, it shows my audience that actually this park isn't just filled with lunatics, they're actually good Muslims who have a good head on their shoulders that don't keep slaves, <laughs> <laughs> even for free. <laughs> no, but, uh, yeah, I'm still, I still actually would like to do that one day, free a slave. <laughs> I mean, I'd like to free many slaves, I just wouldn't like to purchase them to do it. <laughs> okay. It's not nice speaking to you. Likewise. Jazakallahu khairan, Thank you. I don't know which one's yours. This one's my one. The problem of disease, the problem of affliction. But Jesus Christ will make you free from every problem. I don't know who's mic is. I'll tell you what, if you give them to me, I'll make sure that they all get their mics back. Free from devils. Free from witchcraft. Free from death. Jesus Christ will make you free. Be Jewish. Be Jewish. Be Jewish. I've got a lot of that. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. Uh, I saw you one time in um I'm just gonna turn my mic off. Um so I don't say five. Uh which one's yours? I've got all your right.